an A-plus drama-packed 2022 trade deadline has shook up the association, showing us the era of dominant one-two punches from a large portion of teams is still ongoing. Philly's combo of Harden slash Embiid creates one of the world's most nightmarish pick and roll threats. Meanwhile, Brooklyn's lost 10 straight, but once Durant and Simmons get onto the court, the Nets' defensive versatility drastically improves with those two lengthy wings. This video shows you the 10 best NBA duos approaching the postseason, and after this list, ultimately, I'll decide the most elite pairing at the end. Right quick, only 11.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. A few heads up before the 10 best duos. First of all, to be extremely clear, this list is in no particular order and isn't a ranking. Secondly, for Milwaukee fans or anyone wondering, while Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday are one of the top trios in the NBA, Chris and Drew's value is nearly identical so that's why the Bucks aren't featured on today's list. However, you can go watch this video I posted on them a few days ago. The two pairs of honorable mentions for this video are Minnesota's Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards, along with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. Kevin Durant and Ben Simmons. Kyrie's only been there half the time, so we're going to analyze the duo of KD and the rarely seen Aussie. GM Sean Marks made the best deal possible to rescue Brooklyn's 2022 season by tearing up a big three that was unraveling right in front of our eyes. With Joe Harris out, the acquisition of Seth Curry is going to pair him next to Patty Mills, giving the Nets two of our game's most proficient deep-range snipers. For a Nets team that ranks down at number 19 in terms of offensive rebounding, Andre Drummond should help them out. In terms of Ben Simmons, of course, no one's seen the floor general from down under play professional ball this year. Regardless, barring he returns soon, Ben's playing style is a perfect fit next to Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Ben's switchability and screen and rolls, his chase down blocks and strength holding down his matchup on the block is all DPOI caliber capable of picking up nearly every guard or forward, as well as some centers. A lot of people have forgotten how impactful of a defensive player that Simmons is. Assuming Kyrie is able to play in the postseason, Simmons won't be asked to be the second option on offense like he was in Philadelphia. Playing next to Kyrie Irving, he won't even have to handle the ball. With Uncle Drew and Easy Money Sniper as his running mates in Brooklyn, that presents Simmons with top-notch floor spacing in a way he's never experienced. The mix of carrying a lesser burden and having elite shooting around him make Ben's offensive experience significantly less difficult. Problem is, Simmons hasn't played since his infamous playoff disaster against Atlanta, so this is all a big if. But if Ben can get on the floor, like I'm predicting he will, man's a solid fit in Kings County. Hoops fans in Brooklyn are desperate for anything at this point. Joel Embiid and James Harden. The Beard and the Process have been looking for players like each other throughout the entirety of their days in the association. If Philadelphia had the marksmanship from deep range and playoff proven scoring of a former MVP in Harden, there's a better chance they would have came out on top in their seven game battle with the Atlanta Hawks. Trey Young and John Collins are mentioned for the ATL later on, by the way. But this acquisition for Daryl Morey, who held firm despite the critics begging him to give up anyone for Simmons, just proves how amazing of a GM that man is. Harden does have a shaky history of star partnerships and messy exits, which is somewhat concerning. But you can't forget, the NBA is a star-driven league, and guess who knows that better than anyone? The exquisite basketball mind in Morey. So, getting Harden and having to give up Curry and Drummond from your rotation seemed inconceivable, but the Nets were put in a position where Kyrie and James were about to break out into a fist fight, and the concerns about the suitability on and off the court are valid. Will Embiid become a consistent roller to allow Harden more space from the perimeter? Will James work off down screens as well as Seth Curry did? Will two big alpha male personalities in Embiid and Harden collide? Also, Harden's going to be a free agent this summer and require the max. Having said all of that, when defenses tighten in the postseason and all you need is shot creation from nothing, that's exactly why Sixer fans feel closer to a title at this moment, more than they have at any point since the process kicked off. Stay tuned until after this list of 10 duos to see if Harden and Embiid are the best one-two punch in basketball. DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine 
Averaging 35 points per game so far in February, Debo's fourth in the NBA in scoring, dropping 27.4 points per game on a fiery 51% shooting mark from the field. DeRozan's proved to be the perfect offensive weapon for the Bulls during bogged down half-court possessions, dropping 1.24 points per possession off isolation play types, which is fifth best. He's the only player in league history with buzzer-beating game winners on back-to-back -back nights, and has altered the fortunes of the Bulls franchise ever since he signed in Chi-Town last summer. Meanwhile, Zach Levine's an offensive assassin. Doubters thought his stats were empty, but on one of the top seeds in the East this season, Levine's flashing a bit of Steph Curry in his game. He's putting up 7.23 point attempts per game off one dribble launches, step backs, and round screens. His shot making bends defenses and opens up lanes for DeRozan and shots from the perimeter for Vooch. Levine also stepped up his D, allowing the men he's guarding to shoot only 44.3% from the field. The Chicago Bulls are winning for the first time in what feels like forever, and Levine's two-way success has played a big part in that. Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam. January saw FVV and Spicy P become only the third duo in NBA history to each post 325 points and 100 assists in a single month. Stephen Curry and Draymond Green. Most people think of Curry as a special offensive weapon, but his defense has been incredible this year. He's holding his assignments to a 36.8% field goal percentage, and the Warriors are 8.2 points better on defense with him on the floor. In defensive rating, Curry ranks number two among all point guards, only behind, shockingly, Luka Doncic of the Dallas Mavs. Meanwhile, Draymond's been out for a while now, but Green's 100.3 rating defensively would make him the most valuable stopper in the NBA, right ahead of the three-time DPOI, Rudy Gobert. Dubs fans are hoping to see Draymond's warrior best passing, screen setting, and defense back shortly, even though they just built up an eight-game winning streak without him before losing their last two. Devin Booker and Chris Paul. Devin Booker showed during last year's playoffs that he's one of the best wing players in basketball by averaging 27.3 points per game and by strapping the Suns on his back at times and dragging them across the finish line into the NBA Finals. This year, Booker's followed up that breakout performance with a solid line of 25, 5, and 4, while shooting a career second best 37% from beyond the arc. Booker's sons are 45 and 10, four and a half games up on the Warriors for the best record in the association. Combine what D. Book's done with the man who changed Phoenix's culture in Chris Paul, leading the NBA with an average of 10.6 assists per game while remaining a top defender at his position. That makes the Suns look poised to make another deep playoff run. Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Jimmy Butler's like Chris Paul in that the numbers don't do his overall impact justice. That's not to say he hasn't produced at a high rate. Butler's averaging 22 points, 6 boards, 6 assists, and 1.9 steals. His energy and confidence are infectious. He grinds hard on both sides of the court, and he's not afraid to take on the most talented players in the world one-on-one. -on -one. His attitude trickles down to his teammates, imbibing them with a little extra something that makes an enormous difference against the top teams in the NBA. Bam Adebayo is one of the few players in the league who can switch on to a point guard at the center position off a pick and roll and smother him before switching back onto a big man, halting his progress at the rim. His ability to cover all five positions is incredibly important to Miami's system and gives head coach Eric Spolstra an edge in game planning against three-point shooters or pick-and-roll specialists. Bam's defending four-and-a-half three-point attempts per game, allowing the opposition to connect on only 30.9% of their endeavors, and he's defending three-and-a-half shots per game at the rim, conceding to a solid 66.5%. LeBron James and Anthony Davis. At 37, LeBron's rhythm and conditioning are still at their peak, displayed by his 29-point-per-game averages, along with eight boards and seven dimes, Despite the Lakers' brutal season, there's still no organization that wants to see LBJ in the first round of the playoffs. Nobody controls the game the way he does. He's Chris Paul with an extra 75 pounds of muscle and 9 inches of height. LeBron blends basketball IQ with physicality in ways we've never seen before, and he's not slowing down. Anthony Davis has been out for most of 21-22, but with a capable roster around them and at 100% health, we saw what Braun and AD could do in 2020, which is win a championship, so they needed to be mentioned on today's list. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Back on January 24th, 
the Boston Celtics star duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown accomplished a feat only three pairs of teammates in NBA history had done before them. Tatum dropped 51 and 10 rebounds as the Celtics got an impressive 116-87 road dub. The Celtics have received 50.10 rebound performances from both Tatum and Brown this season as Brown scored 50 points with 11 rebounds in a 116-111 overtime win against Orlando on January 2nd. Tatum and Brown joined Middleton and Giannis in 2019-20, Elgin Baylor and Rudy LaRusso, plus Bob Pettit and Cliff Hagen in 1961-62, as only the fourth duo ever to have posted 50-10 and 10 in the same year. Even more impressively, Tatum and Brown achieved the feat within the same month. Trey Young and John Collins. Trey's an absolute beast on offense. He's averaging 118.5 points per 100 shot attempts, which is in the 88th percentile. And he has a 41.9 assist percentage, which places him in the 98th percentile in the league. He kills teams from deep from the mid range, and he's mastered the art of hitting a floater in the lane. He's also an exceptional passer, capable of hitting open shooters in the corner off swing passes and finding tiny windows off drive and kicks. On defense, Young does struggle at six foot two. He does get bullied across all three levels of the court. This season though, he's performed so well on offense, his defense can't detract from his overall value. Case in point, the Hawks are 10.7 points better with Trey on the court, one of the best marks in the association. John Collins' profile is strangely similar to Trey Young's. He's a great offensive player and subpar defender. Collins is making around 80% of his shots at the rim, but he's not just an inside bruiser, he's also hitting 39% of his 2.73 point attempts per game. John Collins isn't ready to anchor a defense though, as Atlanta ranks down towards the bottom in defensive rating, canceling much of their excellent offense. In terms of who's the best, it's tough to evaluate newly assembled combos. Both Durant and Simmons plus Harden and Embiid present dangerous challenges in their own right. KD and Ben can rotate the perimeter effectively with their reach, while for James and Joel, it's going to be damn tough to decide whether to trap either of them with the rest of the weapons Philly has in their lineup. Philly's going to be tough to beat four times out of seven. However, based off the Phoenix Suns' beastly success, I'm giving the respect to CP3 and Devin Booker as the best duo in the game right now. But who won the Simmons for Harden blockbuster? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says, I think Cleveland gets to the second round of the playoffs this season. They've been a surprise all season and have been playing fantastic, led by their young big three and all-star reserve Darius Garland, all-star snub Jared Allen, and ROTY candidate Evan Mobley. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.